Parada Rabaris, that's the conductor of the Philadelphia Opera, saw me playing in Lausanne, Switzerland. And he saw me perform, and after that performance, he came up to me and said, Daniel, you have to write an opera for us. And, uh, and I thought that was a joke or something. But then he was really that serious about it and, uh, and, and called me. And then we had a meeting and he said, I would like to have an opera for the tenor uh, Lawrence Brown Lee, a great, fantastic bel canto uh, tenor. And then I said, okay, let's do it. And then the first libretto was in Portuguese. So I, I said, this li libretto is not going to work out for me. We need something else. And Lawrence Brown Lee happened to sing a, a gospel uh, recital at, at the um, Lincoln Center. And we went there and I, we met him. And then this idea came to me that he looks like a little bit like Charlie Parker. So let's just do a Charlie Parker opera. He was a fantastic, unbelievable genius musician. On the other side, he was a drug addict. That's a problem, also an American problem. He was an African-American living in the 30s, growing up in the South, Kansas City. And uh, he had to deal with all this uh, problem of segregation. So I thought that he would be a person that really works very well for an opera topic. We are actually talking about the musician that pushes the envelope all the time. And that also is reflected in the vocal parts. They are very difficult and some of it uh, has to be adapted uh, according to the singer. Some singers have no problem with one part and some other uh, singers say, okay, can I change that note? Can I change that note? Which might be a slightly extreme. But they are singing it and it works very well. So <laughs> it's totally doable. But it's also the idea of, of opera uh, today to, to push the envelope. Like with instrumental music, you actually want to create something that reflects our time and the possibilities of the singers of our time, which are, is, is, is different from, from, from 50 or 60 years ago. They're rhythmically much more flexible and they have an average technique which is uh, much better than in the early days. Well, I wanted to reflect on jazz, but not only on jazz. I also wanted to reflect on the classical music of the time. He's talking about meeting uh, Stravinsky in a jazz club. So you hear some of uh, Stravinsky quotes in the background, and uh, you hear um, the symphony in E flat of Beethoven when Chan is singing about a symphony in E flat. You are my symphony in E flat. And she wrote the book called My Life in E flat. So, so it's reflecting uh, that. And then you hear a symphony in E flat. The most famous one is, is the third symphony of uh, Beethoven. And you hear the opening statement of the in the horn, which is actually the original uh, Beethoven. So these are the, the, the different layers here that relate to different traditions, not only jazz tradition. You have to listen to the sound of the language and adapt the music to the sound of the language. And English is not easy for opera. The best language is probably Italian, or if you sing something in Latin, if you want that, that's, that's the, easy, the easy way out. English, you really have to think about it so uh, that it, it feels natural. Every word has a sound and, and a sentence too, and a sentence too. Okay, I have an accent, I, 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 speak, I speak German, uh, but on the other hand, uh, you have to listen to the language and get familiar with the sound of it and then actually put it into music. Otherwise, you end up with something that's very hard for the singer. Nobody understands what he's singing. Everybody goes, what, what the heck is he talking about? That leads to frustration. And on the other hand, the audience is very frustrated because they say, I can't understand what, what, what they're saying. So you try to avoid that by listening to the music, which is already inside the language. Homer visited me in New York City and said, listen, we want to play it in a club format, in a small place, and we don't have enough space for all these musicians, and also acoustically it would not work, it would be too loud, too many musicians against uh, the singers. Uh, whether I can think about, uh, you know, whether I would agree to reformat the opera.
it was definitely a challenge, but I'm very happy how it turned out. I think it's a different experience from the full orchestra uh, experience, but it has its own color and its own life, and it fits a club perfectly.